Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess of Bahati Life, thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Pisces New Moon, which I feel is, I feel like I haven't been on here and I haven't talked to you guys in a minute. For those of you guys that follow me on Instagram, I have been on the road and you know that because you see me traveling. I was actually flying out to Philadelphia for a private client and I was able to maximize my time, which was so incredible, and see some friends and some family that I left behind in Philadelphia. I mean, come on, we are starting off 2020 with a bang. I set intention for something specifically and within a week, maybe two weeks, things started manifesting and unfolding. That's something that we're going to be talking about in this video um, as far as how to work with the Pisces energy for this new moon in order to manifest your greatest dreams and desires. Of course, you guys know I don't like to share my clients no matter who they are or where they're from because I respect privacy, point blank period. But yeah, 2020 has been insane. Now, next thing, before we dive into this video, you guys know I am so selective when it comes to allowing certain sponsorships or just anything on my YouTube channel, anything on my Instagram, anything in my aura. I am a Virgo. I will protect myself to the end. I will protect you. I am super selective. Some call me picky, but I'm not. It's discerning. I'm very discerning about what I allow in my energy field. And that definitely includes sponsorships because I don't just want anyone or anything bleeding into what it is that I work so hard to build and to protect anyways. So I did though, I received an email from this company and I was like, you know what? I am going to allow this because this is right up my alley. Um, and that company is Rose Forever. Legit, you guys, look at this. They sent me a bouquet of roses. I don't know if you guys can see the quality of this, but when I tell you, these are roses, I believe, that are preserved so that they last like over a year, which is mind-blowing. I've thought about that for a minute and I'm like, how the heck do they do that? The quality of these roses is fantastic. They were nice enough to put a coupon code um, to send the Bahati Vibe Tribe a coupon code. They were nice enough to send this to me as a gift. The time that it came was like perfect because it was right before um, Valentine's Day, right before I left for my trip. I opened the box and I was like, oh my gosh. I personally chose the pink one because it matches my room decor. But you guys know I am notorious for having bouquets, like having flower bouquets that I arrange and I choose for myself. And I can literally spend anywhere between 60 to $75, sometimes a week, but usually every two weeks on flower arrangements alone. I put them on my altar, I put them in my home. You guys know I move roughly about once every year at this point. I always have a garden space, so to see flowers in my space and have flowers in my space is something that's very important to me. And I chose this one specifically because it doesn't expire. Like by the time, I, I think it would actually last longer than a year now that I'm thinking about it, but um, by the time this would go bad, it would be a year and some change later. I would have saved so much money. And I usually add fresh flowers to my altar and my um, meditative space, my sacred space. My bedroom, I'll put like a few uh, flowers, but this one was just perfect. So I chose this one today to share with you guys. But anyways... I'm gonna keep this here. Again, like I said, um, the coupon code is down below. Thank you again, Rose Forever, for sending this to me because it is truly stunning. And once this is gone, or I don't even think that this would go bad because these are, I don't know how they did it. Again, I don't know how they did it. Some t technology is getting crazier and crazier as we move forward, but you know, I'm getting another one after this and probably gonna get a bigger one because it was phenomenal. But anyways, so let's go ahead and talk about the Pisces new moon. Wow. Wow. This is when everyday life, this is how I'm gonna start off this video outside of that awesome sponsorship, but this is when everyday life just gets pushed to the side. I had a feeling that 
this starting around Mercury retrograde because timing I, I timing is so interesting when it work when you're working with your intuition and your guides because nothing is really set in stone but you can get like a general gist of like how things are gonna be by how it feels and I knew that around Mercury retrograde there was gonna be some crazy things that are going on I knew that my schedule is gonna have to shift shift not only because of Mercury retrograde or as a, a result of Mercury retrograde but just I just had this feeling this sense that you know, as I was making my plans, as I was scheduling certain things, I felt like things were going to have to, I was going to have to be very flexible. And basically what it was that we were expecting is not all that we would receive. In fact, it would be better. I say all that to say that starting last night, it is Friday, February 21st. So a few days before the new moon, starting last night and the night before that, I just started getting really, really spaced out. And it had nothing to do with traveling, had nothing to do with anything going on in my personal life because things have been kind of good, but I've been handling things um, behind the scenes. But I just started getting really, really spaced out. And a part of this has everything to do with the energy of Pisces. The sun is in, in the sign of Pisces. Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Pisces. Neptune is in Pisces. The, the new moon is happening in the sign of Pisces. But I had this sense of, okay, I we cannot fight this right now. In fact, if we work with it, if we allow ourselves to lift our feet up and to float in the, the ocean of Neptune energy, you are going to be so surprised. The word that just came through was bounty, of the bounty that it is that you will be able to receive. And that's exactly what it is that I did. Um, and as I kind of allowed myself to stop expecting a certain level of efficiency and productivity or pro productive in the way that it is that we're kind of like trained to think or what is it you expect of yourself and you shift into okay the realms of the unknown you're shifting into the, your intuition you're shifting into working with your guides you will receive so much it is in this time you guys i'm not kidding it is in this time that you are called and guided to really connect with this higher vision for yourself and it's going to come through to you through your feelings there is a, a space of compassion there's a space of vulnerability there's a um a space of transparency i'm also getting a sense of what it looks like is not all of what it seems but that's not necessarily a bad thing that just goes to show that people are still trying to figure out where they're at what they're feeling what's going on with them they're really feeling their way in fact i received an, an a message the other day just while i was living my life you guys it's it truly is like putting normal life off to the side and focusing on our gifted lives focusing on our intuitive lives focusing on miracles so i was le legit living my life and i received a message for two people one um i'm not gonna say her name but she needed to receive it and i sent sent her the message and she was just like wow but it was so interesting because her message specifically and she was trending on she was trending that day, like all over. But her message specifically was so um, in alignment with what a lot of us are going through, but hers was very specific and tailored to her situation. And basically what the you know what we're called to do um, at this time, and it's really important that I talk to you about this first before we dive into the new moon, before we dive into the energy of the new moon, and I'll show you how to manifest under the light of, of this new moon under the energy of this new moon but it's so important that we work with the beforehand it's so important that we understand what it is that we're working with but you really kind of have to put away this expectation of a normal of normalcy of every day normally looks like this yeah but every day is not today and these circumstances are so unique, they're so special. You must be journaling. You have to be journaling, you guys. You have to be capturing these divinely appointed messages, these thoughts, these ideas. There is a sense of kind of feeling your way through life um, and not knowing you know, where you're headed, not knowing exactly what's going on, kind of feeling like in your hall of, you're in a hall of mirrors where what you think or smoke and mirrors it, it's not all of what it seems but that is so good because you're relying on something bigger than you something bigger than your logic 
um, I'm getting a sense of really, if you want to work with the energy of this new moon, go to your meditation, go to your quiet space. Some of you guys struggle with meditation and I do not expect you to perfect it overnight. But I do want to encourage you to go for a walk, to go to bodies of water, go to the lake, go to the river, and just allow your mind to drift. Allow your thoughts to drift. Don't put it um, a time frame on it or regulations on it. Don't try and regulate your imagination. Don't try and regulate your inspiration, your creativity, because it's at this point where you feel like you should be focusing and you might be getting frustrated with yourself that it's the fact that your mind is drifting. It is truly the cosmos and the energy that we're working with showing you that we are trying to inspire you. We are trying to download into your being a new vision. In fact, it was this morning before I even woke up and got out of my bed that I saw something. Like literally it was on, it wasn't like in my third eye or anything like that. It was on my phone of uh, something that totally inspired me and as soon as I saw it, it hit, it resonated as truth. I was like, Jess, this is something that you need to ask for, something that you need to consider that you may not have considered before. And I, I wrote it down because, and it was, it, when I tell you this vision had Pisces written all over it, I'm not gonna share it with you guys right now because it, I haven't tailored it yet. I haven't sat with it yet. I haven't figured out exactly what I want my life to look like like moving forward with this thing because I know that I want this um, and I believe in speaking things into existence and knowing what it is that you want and I also believe in protecting what you are manifesting and there's not everyone has good intentions most of the Bahati Vibe tribe and most of my YouTube followers have very good intentions for me and you know speak good over my life all the time and don't have any feelings of you know negative bad feelings or anything like that towards me but there's some that do, and I just protect myself, and I encourage you guys to do the same thing. But it, this is what it is that I'm saying, though, is that you, you're you going to download, you're going to receive these things, these sparks, these intuitive messages that are like, whoa, I did not even think to consider to ask for that. It was just last night that I was just living. I, I, I felt like I needed to take some time out for myself um, with all the you know shifting the, the energy of things you know being shifted around lately, I need to take some time out for myself. And as I did that, I was relaxing. I was sitting in the steam room, just allowing myself to just, you know, receive, you know, just praying and, you know, connecting with the divine. I had all of the space to myself. And I, when I tell you, I was just getting message after message after message, and it felt so, it felt like a resounding yes. Every single thing was a resounding yes. Meanwhile, all I was doing was sitting back, purifying my body and connecting with spirit, connecting with the divine and being just so grateful for that moment. That's all you have to do and that's all I want you guys to do. So when it comes to setting intention for this Pisces new moon, you guys, I don't typically like to tell you guys what to do because I am not God, I am not the divine and I'm not looking at your astrology chart your astrology chart specifically. I'm looking at the chart for all of us and that chart, you know, your your how that chart breaks down into your life, into your natal chart is so different and the word is it's valuable. The information there is so priceless, it is so valuable that it is never going to be my intention to speak something that I have not seen, that I cannot support, because you guys know I would never try to lead you astray, I would never try to lie to you, I would never try to deceive you. I want you to step into your power, I want you to maximize, I want you to be happy, healthy, vibrant, living. My phone is about to die, just a second. I actually had to switch over to my phone because I drained both batteries in my camera in less than 15 seconds. That's how you know the energy is strong, but anyways. Um, like I was saying, it is not my intention to lead anyone astray. Um, and I feel as though no matter how positive my intention is, it is possible that you, me, anyone else could lead someone astray by telling them, ask for this specifically, or ask for this, or now is not a good time to ask for that. What happens is, is that everyone is so different and everyone's charts are so different and so unique and everyone's timing is so special to them that if I say something specific or if someone else tells you don't ask for this or don't do this at this time and you neglect your intuition and if you don't respond to divine timing or um, you know 
um, like a prophecy that you or a message that, is that you receive and you take someone else's advice and they don't even know you or they're not even trained, you know, to speak a message over you or to they're not um, gifted in speaking a message over you, then you could really block out an incredible miracle just because you wouldn't even consider it. So that's why I'm saying that that I don't like to tell people specifically what to call out for, to specifically things to ask for. However, at the time of this video, at the time of me filming, I have to speak with conviction and I have to say with my full heart, I am getting a few messages here that I wrote down um, for the new moon, for the Pisces new moon that I felt would cover everyone. And the one thing is relationships. I have to talk about relationships, you guys, because if you're not a part of my Bahati Vibe tribe, if you haven't been, if you're brand new to my channel, I will tell you that I think, I look at everything as a relationship. You know, my relationship with you, my relationship with my neighbors, my relationship with my ex, my relationship with my parents, my sisters, even strangers, that's a relationship and my relationship with my phone, all of those things are relationship dynamics. It's how one thing impacts the other. And in this case, I am seeing whatever this relationship is or whatever it is that you are working on, whatever it is that your heart has been calling out for, you are called to give it healing, to give it, I'm getting like salt, like salt bath, like a baptism, but like a salt cleansing, um, purification process at the time of the Pisces new moon. This is something that people usually do at the full moon. I'm seeing it now at the new moon. I'm seeing it as a purification process. In fact, in my own practice, in my own life, it was the waning moon. This is just last night. The night before that, I was called to go back to my altar and to um, work my intention not, and the waning moon is known for kind of releasing things and letting things go, but the thing is is that Anything that we let go of, quote unquote, we're not really letting go of it, like not letting go of it, but we're not saying goodbye to it forever. It comes around in another form, always and forever. So it was just taking all of the progress, all of the journey and bringing it to a culmination now. And I was called to set intention for my client that they manifest, that they maximize all of what that is that they've been working for before the new moon even got there. Because at the time of the new moon, that was when this new cycle would start. This is when this new seed would be planted. But there were things that they needed to receive from the universe that they were working on beforehand um, along their journey that they needed to receive before they even stepped in because they would need it and because it's good for them to receive it. So that's what we were working on, that oil for them. But that's something that, I just, that I'm seeing here, you guys, is at the time of the new moon, You, this isn't just like a, a totally fresh start. I wanna say 15 to 23% of you guys, it's a totally brand new fresh start. The rest of you guys, I'm not even kidding, I feel this very strongly in my heart. The rest of you guys, this is only a continuation of what things have been, but it's just a door opening that has, you know, or the potential. It's all, it's, you're calling out for this door to open, you're calling out for this newness, and you can't release and let go of certain aspects of yourself that helped you to get here. So let's say you've gone through, I'm getting like an internship. Let's say you've been going through this internship and or you're an intern at a company and you've learned a lot. So you picked up all of these lessons, all of these moments that were successful and then moments that were also kind of embarrassing. But all of these moments help to shape you into the person that it is that you are today and how people want to promote you, how they want to value you, and what position and role that you will play in this in this company or with this organization. So as this new moon comes, it's not to say that all of those lessons are all of a sudden released and disappear. No, you take all of those lessons with you as, this, as you set intention for this new journey, this new door to open, this new promotion, this new project, this new responsibility, this new commitment, whatever it is. All of those aspects move forward, but before you do that, I'm seeing the energy of purification, making sure that your spirit, your mind, your body, your soul, all of it is right. I'm also seeing this within relationships that um, maybe, especially with Mercury Retrograde, there's a lot of connections to the past. In my own life, I've re re reconnected and rekindled certain connections that I thought 
maybe, you know, maybe it was the end because of certain things that have happened, just because life, you know, being a human being is messy. But, and this is in my personal life with my past romantic life, but also with my friendships. And all of those things were bonded or they were fixed, patched, mended in some way, shape or form. And this is because of what Mercury Retrograde does, a part of what Mercury Retrograde does, but it also brings in certain connections that you're like, wow, I can't believe you even thought of me. I can't believe that this is, and everything, nothing is a coincidence. Like nothing is a coincidence. All of it is synchronistic. All of it is so perfect. Some people will say, you know, I've been thinking about this. I just haven't done it. You've been thinking about it longer than you said that you are. You are still working from your ego by protecting the fact, by protecting your vulnerability. And I understand that. But moving forward, you guys, um, I'm definitely seeing so many of you guys calling out to infuse, infuse your life with lasting romance, lasting beauty, lasting luxury. These are things that you have to be unapologetic about. Like life is not meant to be cold, hard, barren, um, so discomfort, like have all this discomfort. In fact, you'll see that the, the, the points in history in our lives that there was a lot of um, chaos, dysfunction, trauma were by people who were traumatized, by people who were broken. And the moments where there's bliss and joy and peace and compassion and abundance are the times where people are operating from love and and peace. So that's why it's so important for you to call out for the des desires of your heart because it, you, it, you are a part of the whole, you're part of the greater good, especially under the realms of Pisces. What impacts one impacts the other. And it's like, how can I be fully happy if my tribe is unhappy? How can my tribe be fully happy if I'm not be if I'm not happy and I'm not able to give them messages to help, you know, and to share my gifts and to share my light. We are so connected with each other, but at the same time, we have to have healthy boundaries to make sure that we're not getting pulled down by things that are toxic or things that are draining to us. So I am seeing you calling out to infuse your life every day. Again, we're moving away from this every day. This is the everyday monotony into magic into manifestation, into miracles, into glittering hope and visions and creativity and inspiration. That's what we're, that, those are the realms that we're working with. I'm also seeing incredible healing. If you have to call in healing for your partnerships, do it. I'm going to shuffle cards. If you're going to have to call in healing for your partnerships, if you, if there is some things that you're like, there is no way that this thing could ever be fixed. There's no way that this could ever be right. Call, call it in to make it right. This is not about gripping onto toxic things. This is about, you know, moving from space of love, light, compassion, and healing, and giving yourself peace. Allowing things to be what they are, but expecting a little bit more, if that makes any sense. So let's say you guys know that you are in high school, or you're in college, or you're in your career, and you know that you have to be there. You know you have to make money. You know you have to go to school. You know you have to, you want to get your degree in order to do this job or whatever. That is a part of the day to day, but infuse it with magic. Infuse it with a miracle. So let's say you're having your age. I don't know why, but I'm feeling really called to talk to high schoolers right now. I don't think. I know for a fact that the majority of the people following my channel or subscribed to my channel are not high schoolers, but maybe someone in high school needs to receive this message. But when it comes to like bullying and friendships and stuff like that, you know what, you can maximize your experience and call out to the universe for protection, for your everyday, for your high school experience to be infused with magic, to you to be inspired, for you to have the right teachers, for you to have best friends. All of those things can be called in. If they're not there, it's not too late. There are so many shifts that are happening now currently with Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter and Capricorn. There's a lot of shifts that are happening here. Um, I will say that um, there is a door that is to open. Some people will say that this is toxic or negative. I do not see it as such. Um, with Mars sitting directly opposite the North Node, it'll be so that means that it's sitting on the South Node. Basically, what happens in on the internet is people will say something and be like, "Oh, this is from our past," so we have, but we're moving forward. So if it's from our past lives, and if it's from mistakes mistakes from the past, then it is bad for me to even be in those realms in this present life. 
And that's very linear thinking. Working with the South Node is not an, a bad thing. Working with the energy of the South Node is something that you have learned and mastered in your past lives through your mistakes. You do your ancestors and your past life um, your past life energy a disservice by not taking into consideration the lessons that they have gone through, that they have lived through, that they have mastered. Because all of it applies. All of it is important. So I will say that there is um, some, some realms here that could be triggered. The potential to be triggered, of course, is there to kind of fall back on your on um, lower vibrational type stuff, meaning that if you get triggered by something, you could react, especially with Mars. Mars is very, it can be very provoked sometimes. It can be very aggressive. It can be very, upset, like it can upset things um, and very stubborn, especially as it's moving through Capricorn. And the thing is that Mars is actually exalted in Capricorn, which sounds like it'll, it'll promise only the best of things. But sometimes what happens is that it gives that planet even more strength than it normally would because it's very confident. So I'm just saying that for this time, for the from now, it's February 21st, but definitely around the new moon, to be very observant about what is triggering you, what is quote unquote provoking you, and just kind of journal with it, observe it, um, and don't allow yourself to kind of succumb to things that don't feel right. Your vibes and your intuition is going to be everything. I'm seeing you guys spending more time in your journals, more time in your in the clouds, in the ethereal, in the magic, in the in those realms than getting provoked by certain stuff. But I have to say that. Also, if you're trying to learn from the lessons of your past lives, that would be a great time to do it because we're working with um, prophecies, we're working with visions, we're working with dreams. All of those things, those intuitive messages are the doors are open for you to receive that now. So if you want to, don't be ashamed or don't be bashful or scared to connect with your past lives or connect with these past memories or these past lessons and ask, okay, you know, how do I, how can I use this information? Show me how to use this information. You'll be surprised what it is that you receive. Some of you guys are really diving into your gifts. This is very creative. I'm getting brilliance. I'm getting like a brilliance. It, it, it's almost connecting me to diamonds where, you know, diamonds get, have this pressure put on them, this heat put on them, but it's what makes them who they are. And that's what as I'm seeing is you guys are working with these realms of the unknown through creative outlets, through your intuitive gifts, gifts through, through doing research, through connecting with your tribe, with your community, asking questions, questioning your belief system, questioning what feels right and what feels wrong to you. And creating more depth I want you guys to know that at the time of the new moon this isn't about a concrete yes or no there is a shadow side in between not everything is all black or all white sometimes there is the shadow like the gray area and that's where it is that we're at right now so instead of expecting to hear it instead of expecting the answer to be clear just consider the different visions and how it makes you feel and definitely write them down and capture them I'm seeing you guys calling out for you to connect with your intuition, for you to connect with your guides, for you to connect with um, divine I'm so sorry. This is probably the messiest video that I've ever made in my entire life. But if that's not Mercury, if that's not the perfect example for Mercury retrograding Pisces, this right now, then I don't know what is. But like I was saying, you know, can't stop, won't stop. I'm not going to stop my messages just because my phone crashed but that's just the energy that is that we're working with um but like like it was that i was saying i'm really seeing us connecting with these channel messages intuitive messages working with prophetic dreams calling in healing calling in soul healing don't be ashamed of going back to your quote-unquote past lives and learning from those lessons and remembering i will tell you this really quickly when i was in new orleans i new orleans i received a vision and I'm pretty sure, I'm very sure, about 89% sure, because you guys know I'm kind of, I sit on the fence a little bit when it comes to past lives, but it, I received a vision, and that, that vision alone broke me down immediately, brought me down to my knees for like two to three days. I'm not kidding. That's how powerful it was. And I still am gaining so much from that one moment that of all that I saw, and putting all the pieces together 
still to this day from that one moment. And that's what it is that I'm seeing for all of us, that one message from the past lives, from the divine, from our intuition can change the outcome of everything. It can provide a lot of insight into clarity into things that you've been struggling with. I'm also seeing a lot of love um, and romance and the, the this higher, higher self. I have to tell you guys, I'm pulling the cards over as we speak, but I have to tell you guys, I have been receiving a lot of I don't want to call it signs, but like, just like moments where I'm like, yo, people are about, and it's a, I don't want to say it's a small amount, a small few. It's about, it's, there's a partnership that's happening now under the energy of what is that we have here. Partnership is happening now with, with, with relationships and romance in order to usher in, in order to create this new wave. That's why I'm like, when people are so afraid and, and uh, panicking over <clears throat> the current condition of our world, yes, you know, there's certain things that are getting broken down, but you don't, it's not the end, you guys. Like, nothing is ever truly the end. It only just kind of falls over into the next. And people, like the, the relationships that are coming together now, the relationships that are getting broken down are for the sole purpose of bringing certain people together in order to procreate and create this like next wave of children. But these children are going to be in the most loving, it's going to be the most like beyond the beyond of true love. Where it's all of the lessons of your life that you have, all the lessons of this life that you have gone through through your relationships were for the sole purpose of the future generations. That's how big it is. Nothing is, nothing is not connected. It all is significant and it doesn't usually make sense, but when you connect with your intuition, when you, when you connect with the divine, you'll be like, wait a minute, I know that I'm going through a hardship right now, but it's for a reason. It's for a specific reason. I had to grow because I'm a part of the, the, the wave that is going to connect with this union in order to raise the, ne the next generation. And this next generation is going to be healers of the healers. It, that's why this generation, my generation, I'm 30, I'm 32. My generation was so focused on breaking the generational curses. Like for real, like we were just coming in with axes, just being the, the leaders of this and repairing things. And because of that work, something will be created from that. And it's next level love. So that being said, this video is going to be way too long, but that's a total another video that I should share with you guys and that I want to share with you guys. But let me show you what it is that I've been pulling. Number one, I'm seeing the moon card. I'm getting the tower card. For those of you guys that are wondering what deck this is, it's the pre Raphaelette Raphael <laughs> tarot. I'll link it down below. I actually bought that when I was um, working for my client in Philadelphia. Um, I'm seeing the Knight of Cups. I'm also seeing the Six of Pentacles, but I really want to focus on the scale there. Um, and then the Four of Swords, the Three of Pentacles, and the King of Pentacles, and the Hanged Man. Now, all of these cards here, for me, at this moment in time, are only supporting and you guys saw me shuffling they are only supporting all of what it was that i was already telling you guys all of what it was that i was already receiving this is only confirmation to everything that it was that i was just saying the only thing that was really standing out to me is the six of pentacles right and we'll talk about that and also the king of pentacles and also the three of pentacles but like i was saying you guys there you're we're entering into this quote unquote unknown it's the realms of the unknown. It's like you're feeling your way up against these walls and it's like smoke and mirrors. Some people will look at that and they will panic. They'll be like, wait, I don't, I can't see the truth. Someone's lying. I'm going to get deceived. I'm going to get hurt. At this point, are you guys even concerned with being hurt anymore? Are we really still concerned with being hurt? Like we have gone through so much. We have gone through so much. Why are we afraid of pain at this point? But I'm only saying that because the point of you going into this unknown is not to provoke fear. In anything, if anything, it's to provoke faith. 
and what it seems, what it looks like is not what it is that it seems like, or what it looks like is not what it is that it is. So we need to be so open to what can happen here. And that's why the tower card is here. Now the tower card and the moon card are very dramatic cards, but at the time of the new, new moon, I've, I've pulled the chart. I can see it. We're not in any tremendous danger. If anything, it's more politicians and government. That's, I don't want to, I am very careful about sharing my predictions because I don't want to get flagged. I don't know. That's kind of like, I've been called lately to really protect myself as far as what I share globally because I don't want there to be a connection. But, um, and I don't want to be put in danger. But most of the more negative, bad circumstances and dramatic circumstances are going to be things that won't impact the whole. They'll impact certain people, definitely in politics and government and business and those types of things, um, where it can be life-threatening. But for right now, I'm talking to you guys, and it's just me and you right now. Um, and even celebrities, it doesn't really impact you guys. If you are taking care of yourself, if you're taking care of your body, if you're minding, you know, minding your P's and Q's and keeping your mind right and keeping your energy right, you have nothing to worry about. It's those who are, have been actively deceiving and actively working to hoard and be, um, awful people are the ones that are going to be under the influence. Everyone else is under the influence, but not going to be punished by it. They're not going to be penalized from it. So anyways, like it was, I was saying the hangman here, please excuse this broken nail that happened while I was unpacking my suitcase, but the hangman here and the four of swords is about truly surrendering to this process. This is not something for you guys to get frustrated with. It's something for you to be like, oh my gosh, I am actually allowed this time to kind of relax, to rest, to work with my dreams, to receive so much by doing so less. So I don't know like why people have a hard time with relaxing sometimes and easing back up and resting. Many of you guys are actually more tired than usual. Good, you're right on target. Many of you guys are more sensitive than usual. Right, perfect, you're right on target. Many of you guys are needing more time for yourself to journal. You're listening to people and being like, mm -mm, this, is too, this is not what I need to hear. This is not where I need to be. I don't need to be in this energy right now. Nothing against you. You may not even be speaking out about it, but you're just taking things into your own, you know, your own, you're taking your power back and you're saying, I need to kind of disconnect from this right now. That is what this is. Four of Swords and the Hanged Man is about totally pulling the plug out of certain things that don't fuel you and don't support you and plugging into the divine, plugging into the intuition, <clears throat> plugging into plugging into your dream work, plugging into your healing. All of those things are things that I'm seeing now. It's not always active, 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 active all the time. Sometimes it's about you receiving and it's in the unknown that you will receive the most through your dreams, through channel ma messages, through past life regressions, through meditations, etc., etc. That's where the offer is going to come through. I'm seeing the Knight of Cups, and there's this is a double message. The double message here is what the divine is going to give to you as far as inspiration. It's like like um, channeled messages when you just allow your thoughts to kind of go. It almost was also reminding me of scripting, where you paint this picture and the story of what you want your life to look like. Um, but then also, I'm seeing this as some of you guys are really being called to ask for humbly ask for divine love this this partnership this union you've been wanting it for a minute you've been questioning if it's real you've been questioning if it's possible it is call it out the next thing that i am that is new new here is i'm getting the energy of cause and effect and this has everything to do with physical manifestation physical materialization um, things that you can see, tangible evidence, maybe not right now at the time of the new moon, but it's planting the seed for what is to come. And when I see the six of pentacles um, and the three of pentacles here and the king of pentacles, I am getting a really strong message of take this time now with the four of swords, with the hanged man, in order to really allow yourself, your feet to kind of dangle for a minute, that's a metaphor, but to allow your feet to kind of dangle, to allow yourself to just kind of rest and to set actual intention 
um, to create your quiet time, your quiet space to see what comes through. That way you know what is right and worthy for you to ask for now. When it comes to your money, when it comes to your resources, when it comes to your home, your health, your relationships, this is, when I see the Six of Pentacles, sometimes this is about, you know, give and take. You know, you giving to others, but sometimes it's the universe wanting to put, to drop some coins into your piggy bank. Sometimes it's the divine saying like, open your hands up. Or I'm going to give you the option to choose from these three different things. What would you choose? And there's no pressure, but at the same time, you want to choose what's going to make you happy. And the best way to, to do that is to know what it is that you want. And then when you state it, yes, you would be happy with the other things, but you'll be happier with this one thing. But it's knowing who you are and having that vision that allows you to receive it. Am I right? Does that make sense? So that's something that I'm seeing here. And the Three of Pentacles is only like a collaboration. It's only confirmation that says we are trying to work with you. Some of you guys are truly about to link up with big, big business. Not bad business, big business, big projects, big proposals. I'm working on something now that I cannot share. But it's this collaboration, this this union effect that is so, it creates a trine. It creates a door that opens in a way that you wouldn't even have expected. You wouldn't even think to that it would occur, but it's here, it's now, it's present. So instead of you thinking like you have all the answers, that you have all the solutions, that this is as good as it can get, maybe consider the fact that taking some time out for yourself and taking this quiet time and this meditative state and to go for that bike ride, to go for that walk, to spend that time with your family, um, to spend that time with yourself, is all that it is that you need in order to get your mind right, in order for you to get your energy right so that you can receive messages. And don't be afraid to ask for messages through your dreams. Now, I have to cut this video off because it's way too long at this point. You guys know that I, when I give it to you, I give it to you good. I give it to, I give you guys a lot. Um, I do feel kind of called to talk to you guys about certain things that I've been doing in my personal life when it comes to manifestation and magic specifically. Um, there's like three things that I can think of that I've been working with a lot lately. And I feel like if I feel like I, I would be open to sharing it with you guys, but just let me know down in the comments below what you, if you would like to hear that. Um, and when it comes to setting intention, I will say in a nutshell, um, I'm seeing you guys calling out for healing. Definitely things connected to the past life, definitely things connecting to past partnerships um, I'm seeing you guys calling in this divine union, this next level love, um, so that you know some of you guys are going to be creating children. Uh, maybe it's maybe you, you're not physically having children, even you know gay couples. Like you're going to be raising these new waves of children, but you need to have the right partner by your side. So, or you're going to be making an influence on other people's lives, children's lives, people who are older but maybe need care. So, but you can't do it by yourself. You cannot do it by yourself. You can, but it's better to do it with someone else. So I'm seeing that. I'm also seeing you guys strengthening your gifts because if it's if you're part of the younger generation, you are going to be sharing your gifts um, through your work and your talents um, through your work, but you need to strengthen that and develop it now. So pay attention to what it is that you are drawn to. Pay attention, really a, like, um, create time and space for you to strengthen those gifts and to consider, you know, working with them every day or every two days. It's almost like tutoring yourself. Only your mentor is your spirit guides. Only your mentor is yourself. Only your mentor are people that inspire you and are doing the work that is that you want to do for yourself. One last message. Yes. See, seven of wands and nine of pentacles. All of this is to make sure that you are self-sufficient. I'm also seeing the guardian here, this little guardian. Um, it's a falcon, but it's someone who looks out for you. Um, I understand that so um, a lot of you guys are very tired, a lot of broken down, feeling energetically drained. That makes a lot of sense because of all of the energy that's been going on through Saturn. But if, if that is truly the case, that's even more reason for you to rest and to take this year and to call it back. And it starts with the Pisces new moon. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know this is a lot. Um, I've had many people say to me, just take a deep breath But <laughs> while I'm talking about it, but I just have a lot of information that is that I want to share. I'm good. Things are pretty balanced right now. So thank, that, thank you 
to me and my guides for helping me to do that. For those of you guys that are, have been asking me about readings, currently at the moment I'm completely all booked up. Um, I have been traveling for private clients, which has been amazing. Um, if you, so just I'm booked, I'm booked up with readings currently right now. Um, but also I have been working more with my oils lately, especially, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I started back again with creating, you know, the full and the new moon oils lately. I just feel so called to go back to it before the last few months. I kind of wasn't doing it because I was spending so much time settling in, setting intentions for myself and then working with private, private clients. But now where they're more open. So at the time of the new moon, there will be a Pisces new moon oil. And basically what it is that I do is I take your intentions. I work with the herbs. I set the intent over the oil and then I will send it off to you. Well, I won't send it off to you. I actually send it to um, Eric to ship out for me who is in New Orleans. So if those of you guys are wondering like, well, how, how, you know, how is it coming from New Orleans when just you create it? I do create it, but it would literally take me forever to pack and ship and send. And I have got to move on to other things. I'm working on other stuff. So I just put them all in a box and I send them off to him and it actually works really well. It's very efficient. I'm surprised more people aren't doing it. Anyways, um, yeah, so all the links for that will be down below. Um, shop updates are every Thursday, usually, unless I have to take a break, um, at 1, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you'll see the links for that. And so is the information for the Rose Forever. And shout out to you guys for sending me this beautiful bouquet. I am truly a fan. And I will be getting the biggest one that I can get, which is a little expensive, but I'm going to use my coupon code and... Treat yourself. This thing will literally last a year and some change is what they say. So, yeah. If you guys have any questions for me, please let me know down in the comments. Make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.